Good morning. A little bit cloudy and overcast today, but I'm going to do a video here quickly on how Jews and Muslims attack Christians. I've been made aware of this many times. People send me video links a lot, and they'll say, could you do a video reply to this or reply to that? Uh, this guy's shaking my faith, or I don't really know what to think about this. Is this true? And uh, they all do the same thing. Okay, and I'm going to share with you three tactics that these guys use to make Christians try to lose their faith. Uh, the reason that they do that, of course, is because Christians start to witness to them and they realize that their system is false. Both uh, modern Judaism and Islam are both false. They're both rejections of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God, and he is to be your Lord and Savior. If you want to go to heaven when you die, if you want to burn in hell, well, then continue in your system. Um, that's just the truth of it. I'm not going to mince words. But they use these tactics, which are very philosophical in nature, and that's why the Bible warns about, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, in the book of Colossians. Um, so let me tell you what these three different tactics are. Number one, they will blend Catholic and Protestant together. They just, anything called Christian, it's all just part of Christianity. Uh, no, um, Catholicism has never been Bible-believing Christianity, nor will it ever be Bible-believing Christianity. All right, that's one, the main thing you have, have to get figured out. They'll say, well, the church t teaches this, the church does this, the church does that. What is the church? Okay, define it. What's well, Roman Catholicism? Okay, problem number one. Okay, Roman Catholicism adds to the scriptures. Uh, it's a political system of Religion used to control the masses. That's what Roman Catholicism is. Um, I mean, just read the New Testament and look and, sh and see where there's any pope or archbishops or nuns, monks, you know, sacraments, Eucharist. All those words are just added. And those teachings are added to the scriptures. And they have their divine tradition that contradicts the scriptures. Well, then divine tradition wins out. Uh, talk about being a very unscriptural, very wicked thing. Um, but of course, if you're trying to attack Christian, uh, the Christian faith, what you do is you go and you'll look at the contradictions that are there between Catholicism and the Bible, and you say, well, see, I found these contradictions. That proves Christianity is false. Uh, no, it proves Catholicism is false. That's all that it does. So that's the one thing that they'll do there. Um, another thing, they will confuse textual criticism. They do not understand uh, that there are different manuscripts, that there are different types of Greek texts, um, even Hebrew texts and things like that. There are texts that have been corrupted. They don't understand that. And, or if they do, they will just be dishonest and pretend that it's a problem with Christianity. And they'll say, you know, <clears throat> Christian scholars disagree on... 1 John 5, 7, the Johannin comma, that there are, and they'll read some, you know, new version uh, devil, and he says that 1 John 5, 7 should not be in there, or something. There's no, you know, only a few late manuscripts have 1 John 5, 7. That's another one of their lies that they'll like to teach you. Um, and what they won't tell you is that there are early church father citations, which we don't follow the church fathers, but to try to prove this scientifically, there are early church father citations of 1 John 5, 7. So if it was only a late added reading, why are early church fathers quoting it? They don't tell you that. Okay, see, there's, again, people, they can come out with these attacks from sort of a philosophical type of a way that they do it, and then it makes you, you oh, I didn't know that. Oh, you know, and uh, the New Testament manuscripts, there are thousands of differences between them. Are you aware of that? Well, um, what are we talking about here? Define it. Well, the Greek, the Greek of the New Testament, there are thousands of differences between the manuscripts. But what are the manuscripts? Okay, if we're talking about Sinaiticus, the 19th century creation uh, that it is, it's not a uh, fourth century uh, oldest Bible, complete Bible. That is nonsense. Um, it isn't. It was written by Constantine uh, Simonides, a Greek monk in the Orthodox Church. And it has a lot of Masonic type of um, backing to it and whatever else with Constantine Tischendorf that brought it out. 
and I'll be bringing out more information on that. Um, but you see, these guys will bring this stuff, these types of things out, these attacks, and a, a new Christian will think, oh no, I didn't know that there are thousands of differences between my New Testament manuscripts. No, there are there, there are thousands of differences, but it's between a corrupt text and the Textus Receptus. You look at the Textus Receptus, there aren't thousands of differences between the different, you know, finding of manuscripts and things. They agree uh, well over 90% of the time. Uh, you might get one that has a, you know, a word that was left out by mistake or something or whatever, but that's why there's thousands of them and you compare them. Okay, uh, the New Testament is supported by, in your King James Bible, uh, not the new versions, they're based on these corrupted texts that came out of the Vatican and also the corrupt Greek Orthodox system, um, which the Vatican supports that. Um, but your Textus Receptus, the received text, is uh, over 6,000 Greek manuscripps that have been found and collated. Uh, in other words, they've been going through and everything to compile your Textus Receptus that underlies the King James Bible. So the King James Bible is the greatest work of scholarship ever in the history of man, period. No question about it. But you see these guys, they, they will play on the differences between the two different texts and then they'll say, see, there's all these errors. How can you claim to have a perfect New Testament when there's thousands of differences and variations and readings? And the Greek, actually the Greek word says, and again, watch out for that movement. The actual, the real way that the Greek word, you know, in the original Greek, and there is no original Greek, okay, that's nonsense. It implies that there's an original autograph out there, and there isn't. There aren't any uh, original autographs that you can look at. Okay, so watch out for the term original Greek. Now, they could be saying in the Greek that's before the English, they could be saying that, but then there's 40 different Greek texts, some of them with multiple editions. So, uh, it's a lot more complicated than most people realize. And that's why you have to be careful of that stuff because people can uh, destroy your faith. What you really have to come to the way of thinking or the way of thinking you need to come to, say it that way, is, okay, um, so the Greek does not underlie my King James Bible. Okay, well then uh, what am I supposed to do? Um, where are you trying to, you know, where are you leading me here? You know, the Bible talks about if the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into the, into the ditch. That's what the Muslims and the Jews are trying to do. They're trying to lead Christians into the same ditch that they're heading for. And the ditch there that Jesus was referring to is hell. You know, the sides of the pit, another way to say it there back in the Old Testament. But point number three, they don't understand how to rightly divide the scriptures. They have no concept of that. Um, and so they'll come out and they'll say, well... The Apostle Paul, he taught one thing, and, um, and Jesus taught another. You know, and the Apostle Paul, he's trying to get rid of the, he hates the law of Moses, and he said that Jesus destroyed the Ten Commandments, and that the other disciples, they, they didn't like Paul, and there was a lot of things there, and Paul was a false apostle, and, you know, which I answered that thing years ago, you know, many years ago. There's some atheist uh, professor, you know, claims to be a Christian atheist. How does that work? Oxymoron if you ever heard of one, but you know, I'm a Christian atheist and and I can prove to you that the early Christians rejected the teachings of Paul. No, they didn't. <laughs> no, they did not at all. Uh, well, but early on they were teaching something different than what Paul taught. So that proves therefore that uh, that they were enemies, you know, and whatever. No, it proves the transitional nature of the book of Acts. And if you're saved, you would understand that. Which brings me to the real point here, the real issue in question. I'm trying to get to this with my hand here, my little New Testament, turning in it. What does the scripture say about these people, these Jews and these Muslims? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned it takes spiritual discernment well how can you have that if you're lost see that's why these people they don't understand things and they go and they look at things and they and you know maybe they're they're not just deceivers maybe they're sincerely just really confused because of their lost condition and they're looking and they're saying 
this looks like this big jumbled confusion thing and they have no way of knowing how to get through it. Let me just say it this way. Let me illustrate my point right here behind me. How do you walk in among these trees? I think this is called Virginia creeper here, this, this vine. And uh, how do I walk through that? Well, I can't. I can't get just walk right through that thing. I'd maybe crawl underneath it or something. No, I need to cut through that to make a path to go in between these trees here. A lot of these trees are really close together. You know, I have to cut a path back through there. But you look at this and it's just a jumbled mess. Well, there's some birch trees there and there's a, a quaking aspen there and there's uh, might be a maple tree over there, you know, and all this Virginia creeper hanging all over it. And there's plants down here, Timothy grass down here, and there's uh, this and that. Oh boy, what a confusing mess. Well, you have to learn how to cut through it. All right. Um, Christianity, what falls under the word Christianity, is a confusing mess, unless you're saved. When you're saved, when you're actually born again, you can look and say, well, that's a deception, that doesn't work. This, you know, where's this at in the Bible? That's not there. You know, oh, well, you have the uh, Catholics, they have all their issues and things, and you look and you say, there's no Pope in the New Testament. Huh, you know, well, Peter was the first Pope. Peter was married. Peter was uh, far from being celibate. Um, Peter also uh, was proved wrong. He was not, you know, some kind of holy, infallible Pope or whatever else. Peter made mistakes. Peter never claimed to have ever gone to Rome. Um, he never claimed to be, you know, have some kind of special authority or some kind of thing like that. Um, so, you know, you can look at that and say, well, I'm not going to be a Catholic. I don't believe in that whole system. Then you look and you see the Protestants, and the Protestants have their church buildings, and you read the New Testament, and there's nobody has church buildings. Hmm. Hmm. You know, and the Protestants uh, wear Sunday best and they have their 10% tithe and all these other things. And you look at that and you say, well, I don't really see that in Scripture. Um, hmm, what sayeth the Scriptures? And uh, what about the Scriptures? Uh, let, me, let me look into that. I want to see what the truth is on this Bible version issue. Well, I read James White's book and, and he convinced me that there is no such thing as a perfect Bible. They're just translations of translations and they all have errors and we have to just continually walk around pretending that we have a, a Bible that's God's word, but it's not really perfect. And, and I just have to continually go to the Greek, the Greek, the Greek, the Greek. Oh, well then why don't you read, if you read James White's book, why don't you read some books by uh, Sam Gipp or Peter Ruckman or David Otis Fuller or, you know, uh, Dean John William Bergen and... And, uh, you know, different guys that actually stood up for the King James Bible. And there's plenty of other ones, too. David Daniels has written quite a few good books. We'll be talking about those in the future. You can see the fireweed's really in good bloom over here. Show people that quick. But um, read books that build faith in the Word of God, not to tear it down. And that's what all these new versions do. They tear down the Word of God. That's You can't have a Bible that's... Uh, God's word. You just kind of, you know, go through life with this philosophical thing of, you know, a better translation would be. Actually, the Greek word here would be better translated as such and such, and my beliefs are constantly changing as the uh, New Testament textual criticism constantly changes, and and uh, if we find a, you know, my, my beliefs are fairly secure right now, but if they find a, a new manuscript out there, then I'll drop everything and run over to the new manuscript. Uh, that's not Bible-believing Christianity. Uh, you read through the New Testament and they're saying, um, you know, the Scriptures, uh, you know, according to the Scriptures, thus saith the Lord. It's a, you know, firm stand that you take on the Word of God. It's not this philosophical thing where you're changing all the time. So, um, my recommendation to you is if you, you know, I feel led to, to watch these videos by these Jewish rabbis or these Muslim imams or clerics or whatever, or just people making videos and I'm going to get into apologetics or some kind of thing. You can do that stuff, but um, my recommendation is if they're, you know, our job as Christians is to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You give the good news to people, they don't want the good news, you say, okay, go with the next one. All right. Um, you know, the, the Lord, when he was here, he went to the fig tree and he looked for fruit. 
and there was no fruit on the one fig tree and he cursed it. And uh, of course there's a, some symbology there of the nation of Israel for rejecting him. But um, the whole point is, as a Christian, you go and you give the good news to people and then you look for fruit. Oh, I, okay, they got saved. Oh, well, good, praise the Lord. Okay, stand back and watch and see if fruit grows. No fruit and no conversion. Uh, oh, we're supposed to be fruit inspectors. Yes, we are supposed to be fruit inspectors. Jesus said that we would know a tree by its fruit. All right, um, and so you go and you look and you say, uh, I wonder if there's any fruit here. Right here. I think it's the first one I've actually seen this year yet. Right there. Not quite ready yet, but it's a little wild red raspberry. And there should be a lot more of them around. There's one back there that looks a little bit better. Let's see if I can reach that one. Yeah, getting there. It's not quite ready, but... Good enough. A little red raspberry there. So thank you, Lord, for this. Yeah, fruit's good. That's good. There's a good plant back there. It's growing good fruit. <laughs> um, you go and you, you look and you say, I'll give the good news here to this person. Ah, I'm not interested now. Let me give you some contradictions and whatever in the Bible. And uh, Okay. No, thank you. My, your job is not to argue and intellectually stimulate the enemies of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's not your job. And um, you get into that stuff, if you really don't understand what you're doing, they'll confuse you and they'll mess you up. I've seen it with people. And that people have you know, written me over the years and oh, I used to be like you. And, and, um, and then I started to study and, and now I'm a I've converted to Judaism, or I'm I'm a, I'm a Muslim now, and I used to once be like you. Um, no, actually, you never were like me, because you see, if you'd actually taken the years to study, which I've taken over 24 years to study the uh, Bible version issue, and even more years to study other subjects of the Scriptures, like the timing of the resurrection, the pre-trib rapture, as many people call it, um, you're not going to sway me. Okay, I am set in my ways fully, completely, thoroughly set in my ways, and you will not budge me one bit from my stand. Period. All right, I am fully convinced from the scriptures. Um, well, what about this? What about that? I'm not interested. I'm not going to waste my time on you. Um, just that way. So, somebody comes out. Again, remember, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you are believing in God, Almighty God. There's no one higher than, than Jesus Christ. Um, when Jesus says about my father is greater than I, he's talking about the soul being greater than the body. Okay, that's all that he means by that. It doesn't mean that his father's up in heaven in a special robe with a long gray beard or something. There's nobody in heaven uh, that's like that, that's the father and then the son is separate and he's over there and they're both doing their little thing or whatever. Uh, no, that's uh, Roman Catholic pagan fantasy is what that is. So... Do not be moved. Do not be shaken. If you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you have the right one. Um, he's not just a prophet. He's not a false prophet like the, uh, a lot of the modern Jews try to, to make him out to be. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. God manifest in the flesh. The perfect um, God came down here in flesh, became man, so that he could live a sinless life and he could die on the cross and be buried and uh, rise again from the dead unlike uh, any of the Jewish rabbis unlike any of the Muslim imams or, or Muhammad <laughs> the pervert um, no, Jesus Christ is perfect and he's sinless and he will be coming to judge this world and you better be right with him and uh, the body of Christ when our time is up we will be going up to be with the Lord, and then the Lord uh, will be punishing this world. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. That's what the, the whole book of Revelation is about. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. I have to say that a couple times, you know, in my videos, because a lot of people still don't get it. Oh, the, the, it's for the purification of the church. 
Revelation is for the purification of the church. Okay, papist. Um, <laughs> no, it's not what the Bible teaches. The book of Revelation uh, is for people that don't believe in Jesus Christ currently. The revelation of Jesus Christ. That's what it's about. So, do not fall for this uh, anti-Jesus stuff, anti-New Testament, you know. So, unless you're using a new version, something other than the King James Bible, then you should listen to the, the fact that your version is in error, because it is. But, um, that will be it for this video. Um, you can watch my videos I have here at the end. Uh, I'm going to be putting up some videos here about uh, was the Apostle Paul a false apostle? Like I said, I answered that thing years ago. It's one of the big attacks. And um, he wasn't. But you can watch the proof right there. That will be it. Thank you for watching.